Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. Welcome back to Bayonetta. It's time for chapter 9, which is Route 666, which I'm sure you can appreciate the joke of that title. And uh, before I jump in, I want to mention a couple things. Firstly, I want to remember to thank my friend Alison for, you know, sorting out some problems with my recording setup, which means that I can now record at a higher resolution, which means that I can game the YouTube algorithm into actually giving me decent encoding, which means it, you know, for the last few episodes, um, everything should be crisper and smoother and not have weird artifacts in it. So kind of depressing to realize that half of this Let's Play will look like garbage, but hey, you know, we learn, we move on, it's fine. So yeah, thanks Alison so much. I've been meaning to put this at the start of the last two videos and I just completely forgot. Secondly, um, well, I'm really, really bad at racing games and this entire chapter is a, you know, race-based minigame. So, uh, I'm probably going to screw up, but I just want to mention that there are two collectibles in this stage, just in case you're following along at home. Um, I might miss either or both of them, so I just want to mention that uh, the way to get them is basically to hug right during verses 3 and 4. Um, verse 3 has one at the top of a bridge, so you, if you hug right you can get up onto the bridge supports. And verse 4 has one on an off-ramp, so if you hug right you can get onto the off-ramp and loop back around and grab the heart. So yeah, let's go! in these heels? I don't suppose I can call a cab to get me to the island. Nice to see that the uh, weird European mishmash is still going, cause... Luca, did you steal a tank? Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> we've got, what, Spanish architecture, Hey, no, they should absolutely be wearing seatbelts. That's incredibly irresponsible. Luca, you are guilty of child endangerment, and I am going to prosecute. Mm, no, I'm not. Okay. But yeah, so we have the um, Spanish architecture and language, some Spanish language. We have people, characters talking in French. We have a location that's sort of vaguely French, but for some reason all of the, uh, all of the police are British. I, I'm not sure what's up with that. It's also nice to see that after a brief dalliance with um, making fun of her, the game is back to just Bayonetta being relentlessly rad all of the time with flourishes and car tricks. is on par with your journalism. I figured I'd beat you to the island, but the guards had another idea, didn't they? Not really my best plan, huh? You think you've got me figured out, don't you? We journalists have to have some detective skills, you know. You're after a gemstone, and that stone has to be in the Ithaval group building. I'm headed there too. How odd. You seem to know where I'm going before I do. Yet you don't seem to know how to drive a car in a straight line. What am I? A chauffeur? Cheshire, do you have any idea what prolonged walking in this salty air will do to my hair? Well, I tend to use some product when I go to the beach. I'll take care of our pest problem. <sighs> Wonderful. It's weird that they're just bantering like friends now. The last time I checked, they were still like he still thinks she killed both his parents and Cerise's parents. What's I'm up with that? I'm getting the distinct impression I'm not wanted on that island, but I love it when people play hard to get. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's time for a cool highway fight which I think we can all agree is rad. Uh, something very amusing is that if you do successfully slap these guys off of uh, off of it, they just zoom by. Like, get fucked, buddy. They're just gonzo. Um, it's also amusing that, um, as far as I can tell, these vehicles are basically on just a, you know, the same relational plane. They don't move, really. 
Um, for cosmetic purposes, they look like they're zooming backwards and forwards a little bit distant and side to side, but um, they all remain exactly in the same positions relative to one another so that you don't have horrible problems of, you know. It's just occurred to me that the crow, crow form would probably actually make this a lot easier. Not that it's difficult. Um, but yeah, they maintain their relational positions. Oop. If you fall down, it's not game over, but you do take some damage and... Oh, okay. I mean, it's primarily ego-based harm, you know, it's just embarrassing. Um, but yeah, so I want to say I really like the designs for the, um, just for the technology in this world. Despite the fact that it's set probably in the modern day or something approaching the modern day, everything is... Design-wise, it all looks like weird and baroque. Even in even in the New York sequences at the very start of the game, all of the vehicles are strange beetles and Cadillacs, and these uh, these APCs are very kind of these strange Art Deco shell designs. Now, I wanted to come into this sequence with a full uh, full magic gauge so that I could hopefully try and get. I'm going to focus for a second. Here we go. So, this is what I wanted to show off two episodes ago. I do want to clarify that I have nothing against um, media being horny. I enjoy horny media. I think it's cool. It's fine. However, we do have to discuss these things in in certain contexts, and it is absolutely an unacceptable double standard that this, you know, the first female coded enemies in the entire game are the ones that have not just sexualized to, uh, deaths, but like that's literally. <laughs> if you're familiar with like BDSM scenes, like definitely murder and execution apparatus are used as set dressing, but a hobby horse like this is an actual like component of those, you know, sexual scenes. And um, I just think it's an unacceptable double standard between uh, the male and female designs here that only the female one is sexualized. That's kind of not okay. That plays into some pre-existing problems. Also, this entire fight sequence um, if you fight them over here at the side, you don't get hit by cars. However, it can be difficult to manipulate them into coming over here, which means that occasionally you'll get hit by a car, or occasionally one of these angels you're fighting will just get absolutely splattered by a passing semi, which is hilarious when it happens, but probably won't. Ah? Uh, no, okay. Well, unfortunate, but still, I managed to show off what I wanted to show off and clarify my position. because, um, oh, I've got some stuff to say about these weird angels, but, and I don't want to detract from me getting splattered by a semi. Oh, that's going to be bad come my quarterly review at the end of the level. I somehow always forget about that. Anyway, yeah, like, I have nothing against horny media. I like horny media. Um, sex and sexuality are completely valid artistic avenues for experimentation, interpretation, and narrative, and all of this stuff. Oh, that's rad. But I do think that we have to, you know, as critical consumers of media, we have to think about stuff, and, you know, misogyny is a thing that exists misogynistic trends in designs are problems like it's it's a consistent problem like and the sexism in the games industry especially is a problem so it's worth mentioning these things um so yeah uh this the rest of this entire level is pretty much like this i think there's a fight sequence at the end but there's no reason not to constantly fire your guns no matter what forever um and you do still get iframes when you dodge on your bike but um, it's only for part of the animation, not the whole animation. So yeah, these cars, um, these car angels, it's kind of weird. They're called Irenix, which 
doesn't make much sense because Irenicism was kind of a movement in early-ish Christianity based around um, kind of rejecting factionalism to kind of bring everyone together in a consistent brotherhood and also massively against uh, violence. It was a completely pacifist movement. It's got nothing to do with angel folklore, which is why it's strange, especially considering that if you look closely, you can see that um, its wheels are the uh, the three-leg wheel angels that we saw, you know, several episodes uh, several episodes back. This is just weird because those guys are referencing the Afanim. The reason why the Afanim are, you know, angels in the shapes of cartwheels is because, like, their positioning in the angelic hierarchy is essentially as the like wheels on the cart of God's chariot. Given that, even if you want to keep those other angels as a separate entity, why not call these the Ophanim? Like they're literally car angels. They are chariots. It's a remarkably strange decision if you ask me. Especially since it's not like this isn't deep, mysterious, ancient angel lore. This is pretty well known stuff. Like one of the three archetypical, hey, angels are weirder than you think things that people mention are the um, cartwheels covered in burning eyes. But yeah, so also I want to mention that back in that cutscene uh, Luca just completely explains the plot to Bayonetta, which I think is hilarious because I had also forgotten the plot up until that point. I had not at all remembered that, oh, she's actually trying to steal a gem from a wealthy nobleman or CEO maybe, like I'd forgotten completely. I just got completely wrapped up in this like bonkers plot about restoring the creator by sacrificing things. She's been completely reactive this entire time. She's just been following on from everything that happens. She kind of just gets yeeted into a new place every single chapter. So that's incredibly amusing to me because I'd like to think that her reaction is exactly the same as mine, namely, oh yeah, that's what I was doing this morning. Uh, I completely forgot what will the fighting god. I do like that you can get witch time on your motorcycle as well. Um, as I mentioned, there's no reason not to constantly fire your guns the entire time, and um, I think there is a good reason to do it, namely that um, if you successfully hit an angel or a car that an angel's standing on, or one of the car angels, you know, you can damage and kill them and then you'll get points at the end and they drop resources, all of the same reasons you want to normally fight them. So, I also want to bring up the music in this because it's absolutely rad. I really enjoy the background music of this mission and um, it's very much music of a specific musical style that I wish I knew a name for, which is this kind of like slightly old style J-Rock influenced thing that I'm basically familiar with from from Japanese games, primarily JRPGs actually. It exactly sounds like a kind of cool set piece music at the climax of a of an old style JRPG. And um, yeah, anyway, I just think that's cool. And it sounds absolutely rad, which is fitting for a, you know, 14th century witch riding a motorcycle while firing two guns simultaneously to fight, you know, existential entities. I'm running out of things to say. Um, I do want to point out that this level can be really glitchy. A bit later on, there's a whole bunch of jumps that we need to make, and honestly, uh, the way that the road breaks in front of you means that it's quite easy to just not see where you need to make the jump, and also, when you're landing the jump quite frequently, you just kind of clip through the other end of it and fall straight down to your death. Which, I mean, is fairly realistic for, you know, highway collapses. But see, let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. So that actually was on me. That wasn't a clipping error, but it's, there are clipping errors in that specific location. And anytime these things kind of collapse and break, there are there's a good chance of um, when you land it, a clipping error happening, and you just go straight through the road and fall to your death. Or to your respawn, I suppose, since I have plenty of hit points left. Um, I did actually record this episode already. Um, this is my second attempt because for some reason all of the audio on the first attempt was uh, really screwed up. It was really choppy and weird. It was just stuttered the whole way through. Hopefully that won't have happened this time because I've done a much better job. 
Anyway, we're approaching the end now. Unfortunately, I didn't beef it this time and get completely minced by a semi-truck on a highway. These guys are actually kind of infuriating to fight. They are the third kind of cherubim that we'll be fighting, I think. So, as you can see, these are tiny, tiny beloveds. And honestly, they are absolutely infuriating to fight because they're small, but they retain the same moveset. They do as much damage as their enormous brothers. Additionally, there's three of them and they can attack all together, although usually they wait their turn, which is polite of them. Additionally, once they've taken a certain amount of damage, they fuse together into a, a new one, uh, one bigger one. This guy is, again, uh, just as fast and just, just as much damage. And, um, like, the reason why this is frustrating is because the main benefit you have against the big ones is they're slower and their attacks are easy to dodge. These guys are fast and small and they have all the same animations. However, you also can't use your um, the benefit of witch time in order to uh, get some hits in. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. Anyway, this guy is going to go down in a second. However, if you do kill one of them before they manage to combine together, then you can use his weapon to finish the other two really quickly and the other two won't combine. And that's, well, that's the end of this. Let's see how well I did. Huh. <laughs> so full on deaths don't actually count. They're not a separate accounting. It's just that one death is worth four item usages on the used item chart. So I guess dying is technically, technically an item that you use. Or maybe continues are. I love the little announcer there because the implication is that you're not really playing the game to play Bayonetta or see the plot or experience any of the stuff. You know, you're playing the game for this mini game. It reminds me of playing games like Ape Escape when I was, you know, a tiny baby on my PlayStation 1 where um, I got super into the mini games that you could unlock and I primarily just played like a Galaga style a uh, vertical shmup that you could unlock inside that game. That was a really good game. I miss it. I do actually have all of my, you know, I have my PlayStation 2 and all of my PlayStation 1 games, but a bunch of them went missing many years ago, and um, I've never figured out what happened to them. I secretly suspect my brother might have sold them, but... Does he watch these videos? I hope he doesn't. Dan, I'm so sorry. You're a really sweet, like, person and a good brother. I, I just always... Been a suspicious bitch, I guess. Uh, okay, I hope he doesn't watch these. Anyway, actually, I kind of hope he does because that would be sweet. But anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.